without those two guys so far this year. Yeah, they did that in their scrimmage early on before the season started. They did it in their first game of the year. And they'll have to do it again here tonight in their first true road game of the season here in Winston-Salem. Brian Young jumps back into the starting lineup for the Blue Devils. Kyle Filipowski wins the tip. Tyrese Proctor at the controls, and away we go on a big night of ACC hoops. And we talked about that Roach Appleby matchup. Those two are indeed guarding one another. John Roach got a lot of time off in the long day off for Duke. They last played 10 days ago. You said he didn't play in that game. They gave him four or five full days off. John Shire told us this morning, and Roach can't connect to start it out for Duke. Now, in his career, Roach has never been a great three-point shooter, but he is much improved from three-point range this year. Duke 10 and 2, Wake Forest 8 and 4. You mentioned Appleby, who last Monday sprained that ankle in practice. And Hildred, second leading scorer, got his own miss, and the final for the sophomore, Matt Marsh, the seven foot one big man from England. Boy, that's a lot of opportunities. Uh, the Duke Blue Devils are an outstanding rebounding team. Good as it gets, especially with offensive rebounding. As we check out the Blue Devils starters, we told you Ryan Young, the grad transfer from Northwestern, returns. Kyle Filipowski starts the Duke scoring, and boy, you think he might need to have a big night for Duke. That's going to be a tough matchup for Andrew Carr, who now tries to return the favor. 11 and wide, the Delaware transfer on an update. Missed the button. Through some contact, he wanted a foul. Well, he missed the close shot, but he had Filipowski at 7-1 and Young at 6-10 harassing him. But that's going to be a tough matchup because Filipowski, he's seven feet tall, but he moves very, very well. He's then, you know, uh, Carr has given up a couple of inches to him. It's Filipowski out there on Carr. Now the very quick Appleby. No dice from deep around Mitchell, but another offensive rebound. Steve Forbes told us the shooter out today, we're not a good rebounding team. He was very concerned about that against Duke. Heldreth in the post, comes up short, well defended by Proctor. Now, Heldreth in that situation, uh, he's just got to find the open man. I, I, I'm not sure that that's going to work very often against Proctor. Proctor is 6 feet 5, 175 pounds. Hildreth has himself mismatched inside against Filipowski. Instead, it's Young going to work on Marsh. Ryan Young with his first two. And Young is, he's not like Filipowski. Filipowski is really a perimeter player in the seven-footer's body. Young is a back-to-the-basket, low-post kind of guy. Very experienced. King of the pivot. He and Justin Mutz might lead the lead in that category. As Hildreth scores on the interior in the mid-post. Now, that's got to be the game plan for Wake Forest. Every time down, Hildreth has touched the ball, handled it extensively, and he's taken a couple of shots. 4-4 in the early going, just over two and a half minutes in. Roach runs off a screen. Appleby trying to stick with him. Post entry for Young. Back out, Proctor. Can't connect, rebound Carr. Now, Wake doesn't really look to run unless Appleby's the guy at the controls. They're not trying to slow it down. Demari Monsanto now. And there's no slowing that guy down. No. He's never seen a three-point shot he didn't like. He hit six of them in the last Saturday at Rutgers in Piscataway, and he's in the starting lineup with Davian Williamson now coming back off the bench again. Mitchell had it poked away, and Monsanto does run. He throws the ball for Marsh. We talk about running. Marsh runs very well for a big guy, and they really like to throw him that wall. John Shire said to us this morning, we've got to make Wake Forest the half-court team. Filipowski crashed on the block. Carr wrestled it away. Carr hits the deck. The loose ball to Monsanto. Now this is where Wake likes to push when Appleby gets the ball. Instead, slow things down and set up the offense with Hildren. Having on Proctor. See, the whole side's cleared for him. He loves the post up. Kicks it out through the contact. Carr on a baseline drive. Shut off there. Appleby hoists. And is fouled by Roach in the corner. 
as the shot clock was winding down. The steal at one end. Monsanto poked it away, and then the lob up top for Matt Marsh. Goal for John Shire, of course, as we know by now in his first season at the helm. Youngest head coach at a power conference school. And, and the way the schedule has worked out, not just this year, but in years past where he has filled in, he has seen a lot of Wake Forest and Boston <laughs> College as far as ACC focus. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably looking forward to playing, uh, to being the head coach with somebody other than these teams. However, he's had great success against them. We asked him today, are you frustrated by the fact that you just had a week and a half to get healthy, to get Jeremy Roach rested and recovered from the toe injury, and now you've got Lively and Whitehead sick and, and not with the team. And they didn't practice the last few days, so they're at the tail end of it as opposed to the beginning of their illness. And he said, yeah, obviously we're frustrated by it, but the good news is, like you said earlier, they're used to playing without those guys a little bit as it relates to just tonight. Wow, John Shire, he may be the youngest head coach in the power conference, but he's been around long enough to know that you don't really win anything in November and December. It's about putting your team together, and he's done a really nice job. I mean, there are only two losses are to Kansas and Purdue. Yesterday, Kansas number four, Purdue number one. Both teams have been exclusively in man to man. Here's Jacob Grandison in the game. He's really a good guy off the bench. Which misses from deep. Davion Bradford, the Kansas State transfer, 20 and white with the rebound. And interestingly enough, Wake Forest has done it. It's early, but they've done a pretty good job keeping Duke off the offensive boards. Duke is an outstanding offensive rebounding team. He got switched on to Appleby. Williamson from straight on. Williamson. I'm going to tell you the way Forest offense operates much more effectively when David Williamson is knocking down threes. It's a 9-0 run the last two and a half minutes. Now, Duke hadn't been able to get the ball inside with the exception of that one play by Young. They, they need to try to get it in there. He's calling for it. Filipowski. Stroke it from deep and Appleby runs it down. And Wake Forest has all the momentum. Corner kick for Carr. Comes up short, Young clears it. Who's got to step up for Duke? Short-handed tonight. Well, obviously, I think the key guy out there is Roach. He's got to put the ball in his hands, and he did a pretty good job that time creating some space. Here's Grandison, who you mentioned. Got his pivot foot and strokes it from the free throw line. Now, he kept his pivot foot, and but he created some space there with an elbow. He hit Williamson, and Williamson went down in the middle of the lane, and that's why Grandison is open. And the officials will look at this. That's a good pivot by Grandison, and he turns, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that there was that much contact there. <laughs> it didn't seem like a ton, did it? No, no, it didn't. But remember, Williamson is a guy who has been injured. He has yeah. had a bad back. And so even, even you know, a slight bump there, given the way his position on the court, that might have been a problem. But Grandison is a great, great guy for Duke to have coming off the bench. He's a high-energy guy who can shoot it. He's a solid rebounder. Interestingly, with Grandison, his 60% of his field goal attempts are from three. That's a tough matchup for Williamson. Again, Williamson has struggled with some back problems. Now, what they're looking at here, obviously, Mike, is they're trying to tell whether or not this is a flagrant foul. And flagrant, the flagrant one is contact that is unnecessary and or excessive. So they have to decide if there is something here or not. There is, clearly was contact. Grandison gets in here and watch him. He's looking to pass the ball, and suddenly he realizes there's nobody guarding him. So he takes the jump shot. So the officials have decided that there's nothing there in terms of a flagrant or anything. And since they didn't call a foul on the play, they can't go over there and change it to a common foul. Which, if there's going to be anything, that's all we That's think we all that it would have been. But they decided there was nothing. And there's and probably the only person unhappy with that is Steve Forbes. Well, and all the Wake Forest fans in the building. <laughs> We'll count them too. 
Hildreth again posting up, dishing for Bradford. Working on Young, carving out space, and he missed the reverse. Well, Young did a great job maintaining his position, and the Wake Forest players have to do a better job moving to open spots when Hildreth is going one-on-one -on -one down on, in there. And the Blakes has it kicked by Appleby on the entry for Filipowski. So they reset the shot clock to 20. So far, the Deeks have done a nice job setting the half-court defense. Very little for Duke in transition, but I, I really think the Blue Devils have to try to get the ball inside. Roach in the mid-range. Blake's an offensive rebound and put back. Oh, Jalen Blake's with a strong move. Well, we're talking about Duke's offensive rebounding. We weren't necessarily talking about Jalen Blake's. <laughs> Appleby dumped it off, turned it over, and now Duke runs with Filipowski coughing it up, but last touched by Carr. Uh, we chatted with Steve Forbes for what? Maybe an hour at shoot around today. We suggested to him, should we mic you up for a game? And he said, not gonna happen. He said maybe his last game. He's been very successful here. Been very successful every place he's ever been. And he comes in after a game in which he told us Rutgers manhandled us. They turned it over 22 times. Right, they, were, here. they were doing pretty well with the turnovers, but the last two possessions they have turned it over. And Wake has, that's one of the places where they've struggled this year. They average almost 14 turnovers a game. A big problem for Wake Forest. And coming off that Rutgers game, some similarities to how Rutgers defends and how Duke defends and cause for concern for Steve Forrest. Right, you can see 14 is the magic number. Gets it for Grandison, a great shooter, and he knocks it down. That's what we're talking about. Grandison is an outstanding shooter. We said 60% of his attempts are threes. Nice job causing the defense to collapse and getting Grandison open. Duke can miss its first five threes. And How about this? Appleby <laughs> scoops <laughs> plus a foul. <laughs> We talked about how what a dynamic player he is. I didn't think there was anything there. I have no idea how he got any sort of a shot at all. He gets down there in traffic. What a great use of the pivot foot. And that, that's not a play everybody, everybody can make. Really does a nice job of just flipping that ball up there. Third in the ACC in scoring. And Tyree Appleby has an early five. He's only behind Caleb Love. And Terquavion Smith. So wake by three, just about eight minutes into this first half. Parker attacks and draws a foul. Mike, when we were talking about taking to get the ball inside, we don't necessarily mean post up moves. You take the ball and drive it to the basket. You can get it inside that way as well. And Proctor really does a nice job driving the ball to the goal. Well, we have seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. Throughout the winter, ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic or take a video, tag it with the hashtag AllTheDevotion, and post it on social. You just might see it on ACC Network. So split it to strike for Proctor at a two-point game. Here goes Hilderson. Appleby kicked it out. Williamson recovers midway through the shot clock. That would be real nice to drive it inside and jump up in the air and make those passes. Hildreth working on Blake's who recovered nicely. And did a really nice job staying in front of Hildreth and then got back to block the shot. Mitchell to the corner for Grandison. John Shire has wanted him to take more open shots. Quick trigger these last few possessions. I think he'll take that shot every time from Grandison. Absolutely. Appleby bounces for Bradford. That was a great delivery by Appleby. Bradford actually, you know, you should, you should just catch that and dunk it. He was very fortunate that he didn't get that shot block because he had to compose himself dribble before he could get to the goal. Now she's up on Young. Backing down. Mitchell for Blakes. With a quick step, Blakes loops it back out for Mitchell. Yes! It is 
is a line drive stroke, but it is a fact. Well, he's shooting over 40% from out there, and that's his 10th of the year. And particularly when you're going to give him that much room, he's going to make you pay. Ball screen from Bradford. Young showed Hildreth now off the bounce with 10 to shoot. Williamson drives on Mitchell, who didn't bite. Top follower goes. Williamson is a guy who can put some points on the board. He's got five. Mitchell. Hildreth on him. Mitchell spins and the lefty doesn't get the roll. That's a real good job by Grant. Keep Young and Bay. the jam at one end. Duke, a couple of threes over these last few minutes. Ten pops, so that's out of all their misses, how many of them do they turn into offensive rebounds? Yet, that's not been the story so far tonight. No, in fact, tonight, Duke has missed nine shots. They have one offensive rebound, so that's not 40 and a half percent, that's 11 percent. Well done. Uh-huh. How much of that is no Derek Lively? Obviously, Lively is an outstanding rebounder, and he's got some quickness that would bother the Wake Forest big guys. So certainly some of it is, but I think Wake is just playing with tremendous intensity and making sure they're blocking out. And if you're just joining us, no Derek Lively, no Tariq Whitehead. They are sick. They're not with the team. The roommates did not make the trip. I hope they're feeling better and get back to action soon. Long three goes from outside for Bobby Lindman. Just his fifth made three, the freshman from Sweden. And he's only shooting 20% from out there, but Steve Forbes would like him to get more involved. A little bit more aggressive, particularly on the offensive end. Very talented player who played in high school with Mark Mitchell. Grandison missed it, Wait by six, they push. And Appleby was out on the sideline, and that's the third deep turnover. I mean, those are just the turnovers you can't make. Wake has a little bit of a push here. Suddenly they're up by six, and you turn the ball over. And that wasn't really a forced turnover. I thought Proctor did a really nice job that time in transition finding Monsanto. Monsanto is very willing to shoot that ball in that sort of a situation. You have to locate 30 and white at all times. Filipowski now. He's only got two points on one of four shooting. He's had a couple of open looks, looks that he makes a very high percentage of that he hadn't made. Freshman averages 15 and 9 for Duke. Williamson, shut off by Proctor. Drops it back out for Clinton. Matched up with his old high school teammate, and Clinton lost it with good hands from Blakes. Ahead of the pack, from up top. Blakes has really been a boost for Duke coming off the bench. Roach is back in the game now, but Roach has started slowly. 0 for 3 from the field, no assists. Played about 10 minutes now. But Blakes has really been good taking the ball to the basket, and he's been very good defensively against Appleby. Presses out on him, swipes at it, but Appleby recovered. Shot clock below 10 for Davian Williamson. There's just no place to go. Roach all over him, forces Williamson into a tough shot and a shot clock violation. Great day. Really a nice job by the, the Blue Devils to force Wake Forest to the perimeter. I mean, that's just Wake Forest, they're killing themselves. They've with turnovers, they turned it, as mentioned, they turned it over 22 times against Rutgers. They've now turned it over five times in this game. And, when you do that, not only do you lose the opportunity to score, but lots of times you give the other guys an easy opportunity on the other end. And now that's an unforced turnover on Duke's side for the Filipowski travel. Right, Filipowski really has good footwork, and he does a nice job. He's quick enough that he can get around Marsh, and he just got a little impatient that time. He thought, oh, okay, I'm outside. I can go right around this guy. Eight by four, under eight to go first half. Clinton for Appleby. The lob. Marsh again. And that's twice now they've lobbed it up the board. <laughs> He's got a half dozen. 
fourth assist for Tyree Appleby. As Filipowski through contact, will go to the line for two. Six point lead for Wake Forest here at the Joel, and Tyree Appleby has been at the control so far in the first half. He spent his first couple of collegiate seasons at Cleveland State, then three years at Florida, now his first and only year at Wake Forest. And when he rolled his ankle last Monday in practice, he toughed it out. He played on Wednesday against App State, the game Dan you were here for. And after that game, the training staff told Steve Forbes, hey, we don't think he's going to play Saturday against Rutgers, and we don't think he's going to play next Tuesday, meaning tonight, <laughs> against Duke, and yet he has not missed the game. Well, he hasn't missed the game, and tonight he's really been pretty good. He's turned it over a couple times, but he's got five points, he's got four assists, he's got two rebounds, and his assists, and he's also been fouled twice. He's really done a nice job keeping the pressure on that Duke defense. When he gets past him out on the perimeter, the big guys have to step up toward him, and all of his assists, his assists have been to the big guys inside for Wake. And that mark is a dunking machine so far. Kyle Filipowski just split, so he's got three points. Jeremy Roach is scoreless. Those are, of course, the top two scores for the Blue Devils. Appleby kicks to the corner. Monsanto strokes it. That's what he does. I was actually surprised that he didn't pull the trigger right away. But he reset his feet. Marsh commits the foul on Roach. Largest lead for Wake here at eight. That's good recognition by Roach. He sees the big guy on him. He takes the ball and tries to go to the basket. I think Duke needs to do more of that. They don't want to settle for the outside shot. Put some pressure on that Wake Forest defense. And he can make the outside shot, but for heaven's sakes, he's seven feet one. Maybe try to get a little closer. Appleby working on Roach. Adjusting. And I'm sure it works the rebound. Roach did a nice job, even though he got beat out on the perimeter, catching up. He drives, and Clinton poked it away, and they say last touch by Roach, and it belongs to Wake. The first thing the ball touched out of bounds was Roach, and so that's, that's why the ball is out of bounds, and it's out of bounds out off Roach. This is a good job by Roach to try to get in the lane. Nice defense by Clinton. The ball hit Roach on the foot as he was standing out of bounds. Roger Ayers presiding. Appleby, such a high usage player. Missed it, tipped out to Mitchell. There's a bit of force that time. That was really good defense by the Blue Devils. Under six and a half to go in this first half. And Winston Salem, great going one in the ACC, Duke one and oh, had a win against Boston College. Corner three for Blakes, one in the first half, he's got seven. He's really been outstanding, he's been a force coming off the bench. Hasn't been a great three-point shooter, but that one looked good. Coach Hire hinted at his importance when we chatted with him this morning. They've only got seven deep, no Christian Reeves, no Jaden shoot. And now a foul on Wake on a Ryan Young rebound. This is a nice job. Uh, Carr has to come down inside to help out against Young. And Blakes just goes finds the, and finds the open spot in the corner. You don't want to stand there and be a spectator. If the, your guy leaves you, go find an open spot. And your teammate can get you the ball. Clinton picked up his second. He goes out. Blakes at the control. He only scored 10 points his last five games. He told me he's got seven here in the first half. Now he slices, and he lost his footing around Monsanto. A recovery by Roach. Carr. Hits. John Shire wants a timeout. Wake by eight. Back in 30 ticks to win the set. Pacific. Mike Wake Forest so far has made four three-pointers and by four different guys. And the Deeks can be very effective when they don't turn it over and they're making three. Ryan Young on the finish. Good deep from Kyle Filipowski. Well, how does a 6'10 guy, 235, get find himself that alone for Keith Baskin? Ryan Young's got four for Duke. Lead a half dozen for Wake. Under five to go in the half. 
Melvin spinning. The doctor snatches it. Roach has real force to cover it. Roach, crafty dribbling. What a pass for Mitchell. And it popped down. Eldreth in transition. Smartly backs it out now to Carr. He backed it out, but he should have pitched that ahead to Appleby. Here's Appleby. Popped it up. Marsh to the corner. Truly, he has never shot. Well, Monsanto can make that shot. He just missed that. Roach on the baseline. It's a deep turtle. I think actually Monsanto was a bit surprised that the pass came out of there that quickly. He didn't have his feet set. Wake has done a really nice job pushing the ball up the court and finding open players, open shooters in transition. Appleby's going to the bench to get a little bit of breathing. Keep an eye on that. It goes out in a six-point game. Can Duke make some headway with Wake's star out of the game? Driving off the shot fake. Off last to two. Did a nice job using his body against Filipowski to create that space where he could score. This is a really important last four minutes, I think. Wake sort of has the game under control. Or, you know, they give, they give that appearance, but you know, if they turn it over, it's going to be tough. Roach. Young and offensive rebound. Mitchell. Tough rack. Talked about Wake and the fact that they've done a pretty good job on their defensive boards, but they do not do that this time. And that creates a problem. It's not a turnover, but the offensive rebound draws the foul and the basket. The ball to the basket. Steve Forbes has to be happy. The Duke only has two offensive rebounds, and his team has five. But interestingly enough, his team with those five offensive rebounds only has two second chance points. Duke, with their two offensive rebounds, has four second chance points. Chance at a three-point play here. Steve Forbes meanwhile is not happy about the foul call that puts Mitchell in position to stamp that three-point play. Tyree Appleby is still out of the game. He's getting his first breather of the night on the Wake Forest sideline. Hildreth attacking. Duke wanted him walking with it. Filipowski blocks him anyway. Hildreth now one for six. And he's had two of his shots blocked. And a couple turnovers. Grandison, too strong. One arm rebound by Carr. Because he was blocking out with the other arm. Boy, Monsanto. <laughs> he's jumping up and down on the other end because he was all alone. Carr. Oh, that is smooth. He was mismatched in transition. Wake pushed it up quickly, so in transition, he finally found himself up against Roach, and he did a nice job making that mid-range shot jump shot. Six foot ten Delaware transfer with a lot of skill, and Andrew Carr has seven. He has struggled against their high major opponents to score this year. Young, underneath Filipowski. Filipowski was mismatched inside against Williamson, and Williamson left him when he cut across the lane because he thought Monsanto was going to pick him up. Monsanto didn't see him. No Lively, no Whitehead, and Jeremy Roach hasn't scored yet. Duke only trails by five. Hilbert gets it to go. Hildreth continues to be extremely aggressive. He's taken more shots than anybody else on Wake's team. He's now two for seven. More from Ingman. Filipowski. Ball away was too strong. And it's last touch by Duke and Ryan Young. We've got a college basketball film ahead tomorrow night. Right here on the CCN in the app. Number 21, Virginia Tech and Chestnut Hill to face Boston College at 6.30 Eastern. Then in Tallahassee, Florida State, and Notre Dame. So by the way, after this game here, top 25 showdown for you. Virginia and Miami in a really good oh. game tonight. Miami has played so well so far this year. Boy, there's, I don't know what happened there, but that's just, that's the kind of a giveaway that you simply can't afford in a game like this. 
costly as Proctor laid it in. And Proctor jumped up in the air to pass the ball, and there was nobody to pass it to. Williamson behind the back. simply could not make the pass that he wanted to make. He was in traffic, didn't get enough oomph on that ball. If he throws that so Williamson can catch it in stride, that's a layup. Carr does a great job wrestling the ball away, and he just can't get enough on the pass. But what a great job by Young to get back there. Young is the guy who lost the rebound down on the one end, but he sprinted up to the other end. He committed the foul, and he prevented the easy basket. Ryan Young is playing heavy minutes for Duke. He's at 16 minutes in this first half. Averages 20. Steve Forbes will take a timeout. And we'll take it as well. Inside the final minute of this first half, right back to Winston-Salem after this. Forbes, respectively, and for Duke, with those road wins, it's their first true road game of the season. And that's important to remember. They've lost two games but they've both been neutral site games. They come here, there's no students. We're gonna break here at Wake Forest. Late first half, seven point game, Demon Deacons in front of the Blue Devils. And Bonner, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you from the Joel. Pitch back for Grandison. Can't knock it down, and Duke is now three of 15 from three. Three fourths called that time out to get Appleby back in the game for the last 50 seconds. Of course, it was a use it or lose it timeout. About an eight second difference between game and shot clocks here at the end of the first half. And they're obviously gonna run it down as far as they can. That will be off the hop. And Mark Mitchell commits his first foul. And now, Wake Forest can hold it for the last shot of the half. It's only the fourth team foul by the Blue Devils. The Blue Devils have done a nice job defensively without fouling. Jalen Blakes checks into the game. He matches up with Hildreth. And that's where they're going with the ball. And Hildreth is going to the line. That's two on Blakes. Well, Hildreth, they list him at six feet four, 200 pounds, and he is a guy, <laughs> he really likes to get inside and use his body in there. He's a hard-nosed, competitive guy. He's the sophomore from England. He's got his folks here today. Dad on the left. Dad's having a good time. Mom on the right. <laughs> I didn't see anybody telling jokes, but he seems to be enjoying himself. <laughs> he knew he was going to be on TV, too. He got the, the clean fade. <laughs> Matt Marsh, also from England, his family here as well. That one rolls in, so Hildreth makes both, and it's the largest lead of the half for the Demon Deacons. Roach with Carr switched on him. Filipowski's matched inside against Appleby. And instead, a top two comes up empty. And as loud as this place has been all night, sends us to halftime. Nine-point lead for Wake Forest on number 14, Duke. Let's go to the studio with Luke Hancock. Here's down in that first half. 
and they have the lead through the Deacons when Monsanto has only made one shot. He's one for four from beyond the arc. And usually they play there at their, at their best, but he's making those three. Pretty organized look. Side out of bounds to begin the second half. Well, I mean, with your Wake Forest, given their turnover history, you can't take anything for granted. <laughs> Seven turnovers in that first half. And right on that average of oh. the team we told you about. Right on cue, Appleby and Monsanto can't connect. Proctor on a step through a little early on there. He came up short and then Roach fouls Hilbert. And those, that's sort of the first the half in the little capture right there, Mike. That was a very bad pass by Appleby. You're throwing the ball across like that. Monsanto can't come up with so they get the turnover, but they cannot convert. That was great defense in transition by Hildreth, and all he did was prevent Proctor from getting past him. So the road scoreless. Proctor, meanwhile, only three points for him. So that's all for the backcourt. And Lars tried to jam on Ryan Young, and it pops out to Roach. Now we've seen that a couple of times, and it's been successful. Well, Young ran the court. He was wide open. They missed him. He had a good first half. Four points. Five rebounds, three assists. Filipowski struggled in the first half. Two for seven. On the roll, can't handle the catch from Proctor, another turnover. Appleby drives. It's very easy to say that you have to keep Appleby in front of you, and it's a very hard thing to do. But once Appleby gets by you, he can be so dangerous and creative, that time electing to take it to the basket himself. Steve Forbes told us he wanted to see Appleby getting back to the free throw line. Rutgers was really physical with him, Steve Forbes said on Saturday. <laughs> Appleby's not like a huge guy. They list him at 6'1", 165. And Rutgers has big physical guards. Men. He's good on both. And the lead swells to 11. We've just got to get something figured out offensively here. Again, I think going inside is the key. He got his own miss, and he's fouled by Marsh with a chance at three. Filipowski just forced it in there, and you might say, well, boy, maybe he shouldn't try to force it in there, but in doing so, he gets all the way to the basket. He doesn't score, but he's in there for the rebound. He chases the ball down himself. The old Moses below. <laughs> you miss it, you get the rebound. Starts. And you just want to see him be more aggressive, more of that. Just yeah. throw your way to the cup. Yeah, get to the goal. Don't settle for those three-point pass, because he's a good three-point shooter, but he was 0 for 3 in the first half. Nine-point game. Hildreth on the back cut, stops and hits. Hildreth is not afraid of him. <laughs> that was a really good stop, and rather than take it to the lane, he just tried to float it up over the big guys in there. Our got switched on the Roach. Lepowski with some size on Monsanto. Needs to take him down. Offensive foul. Well, that's the right idea, but it's the wrong approach. <laughs> if you can't get by the guy, you don't try to bull your way by. This is a nice job by Monsanto moving his feet, and Filipowski throws that arm up out there, making it easy for the official. When you take that dribble, if he's there, you pass it back out. Feel him trying to yes. force things and make something happen. Hildreth off the cross. Appleby. On a roach. <laughs> now, you can't defend that. We got this desperate. We need a basket. Took it away. Mitchell on the pivot to the cup. That's exactly where they need to go. Oh, Mitchell's got a size advantage on the inside, too. What great patience by Mitchell. They're not panicking. That ball got knocked away. around. Now you need some stops, too, if you're Duke. Obviously, you're not going to catch up if you don't get stopped. <laughs> Math is pretty simple. We can handle that. 
Car back out for Hildreth. And Filipowski on it. Hildreth got tangled with his footing there. All sorts of pivoting. Again on Filipowski. He hurt his, I think he hurt his ankle for Hildreth. He's looking for a foul. Mitchell attacks and draws a foul on Carr. Mitchell to the free throw line. 77% free throw shooter. Wednesday is National Signing Day for football. We've got you covered right here on ACC Network in the app. We'll have our annual special breaking down all the recruits, all the highlights, evaluations, with coverage starting of the one hour show at three. Well, the Blue Devils only attempted five free throws in the first half, and that's already three for them here in the second half. So that's a good sign, being a little bit more aggressive on the inside. Now they've got to pick it up on the defensive end. Right for the first time since 10 days ago against Maryland Eastern Shore. And Blake's took it away from Appleby, and a turtle. Now Blake's dribbled the ball into trouble there, and Wake Forest is very fortunate that they get it back. Now they'll get 30 seconds on the shot clock because the ball was, they recovered the ball in the backcourt. On the change of possession. I thought we'd see more of this from Wake Forest. High ball screens. They did a lot of that against Duke two years ago. The lob. It's Morse with the hammer. On top of Ryan Young. Appleby is so effective throwing that pass, and you're right, Mike, you set that screen in the middle of the court, and it's hard to bring defensive help. Young tries to react to Appleby to stop him and gives him just enough room to throw that pass to Marsh, and Young is a little too far away to get back, although Marsh is a very poor free throw shooter. Take to the cup by Roche. Back down to 10. That's his first basket, isn't it? First points for Jeremy Roche. As we had seen him before, he sat out that Maryland Eastern Shore game with the toe issue. He was fantastic at the Garden against Iowa. Carr, back out for Hildreth. Shadowed by Mitchell. 10 to shoot. Hildreth off the bounce. Gets into the post. And gets the roll. It was interesting that Roach didn't drop down inside to help out. He was staying on the outside with Monsanto. Got to do that. Yes. <laughs> Here's Mitchell. Back for Roach, directing things. Lots of ball screen from Young. Snakes it. Roach lost the handle. Carr pushes. Appleby with him. Hold Andrew the ball Carr. Long. It's a blocking foul. You have to give that ball to Appleby. Somehow you have to figure out how to get it to him. Appleby throwing lobs and knocking down three. In Salem and the Joel. And this is a Deeks team under Steve Forbes that had dropped three of its last four coming in. And the only win during that, Dan, you were here for when... Wake needed some help from Appalachian State to get that one-point win and some Andrew Carr heroics. Well, Steve Forbes, guys, this is a Wake team that's not noted for its defense, but I think their defense has been very good tonight. And we still have, obviously, a lot of time left to go, but their offense has been running full bore. Here at the second half, they're four for four. They haven't missed any shots. A lot of high percentage shots as far as the dunks go. Carr get on the first of two. The foul is on Jalen Blakes, his third. He stays in for John Shire. Well, Appleby, you can't ask him to do much more. He's got 10 points. He's got six rebounds. He's got, excuse me, he's got six assists, three rebounds. Now, he does have six turnovers, but Wake Forest hasn't really been hurt as much by the turnovers today as they have been in some of their other games. Roach lost it. Grandison dove for it, and it's right back to the Demon Deacons. 
And one of the reasons is that Duke has turned it over as well. Wake's turned it over 11 times, but that's the 10th turnover for the Blue Devils. So the Blue Devils not having a big advantage in the turnover department. And we mentioned, we've mentioned a couple times, Duke an outstanding offensive rebounding team, but they only have four tonight. Five of those 10 turnovers in these first five minutes out of halftime for John Shire's bunch. Carr sets the screen for Hildreth, a switch from Filipowski. Hildreth ducks inside for two more, he's got a dozen, and the biggest lead tonight for Wake at 15. Well, he really wormed his way in there. <laughs> Slithering on through, Filipowski answers. I, I, you know, I just don't think that Wake, for, that the Wake Forest has anybody down to the inside who can guard him effectively. Who can guard him? Appleby missed it at the rim. Recovered though by Carr. Appleby thought about it. The crowd wanted him to trigger. Hildred. Can't hit. Another offensive rebound. And then Hildreth is bumped and fouled by Grandison in his first. And how about that offensive rebound by Hildreth? He got up off his backside to chase that ball down. So retains possession for Wake. And John Shire is trying to find answers. So he goes to Jaden Shoot, 14 in blue. Freshman from Yorkville, Illinois, playing in his sixth collegiate game, known for his incidentally shooting. He's only played 43 minutes this year. Appleby on a step back. And a rebound to Young. Didn't shoot three for three from three. Last game for Duke against Maryland Eastern Shore. And Roach. Throwing inside again, he draws a foul. On his drives, it just doesn't seem like there's been a lot of breathing room. There hasn't been a lot of breathing room, but he has really caught some contact in there. The, the Wake Forest defense has been pretty good, creating difficult opportunities for Duke, particularly keeping him out on the perimeter. They can run James Shoot off screens. Well, you gotta guard somebody named Shoot. Oh, good footwork from Ryan Young. We talked about the fact that Young is a very skilled back-to-the-basket post guy, and you saw it right there. Great footwork. Great shot at the goal. Back into the starting lineup, his fourth start of the year. Hildred can shoot, hang with him defensively. Bradford backs down on Young, and Bradford scores. And that was... That was a good good pass, but Bradford, I, I don't think, really helped him. He'll was very much on that particular play. It was a really nice job inside. The great pivot. You know, and the whole thing is he didn't try to dribble it too much in there, just to pivot, and then Bradford, you know, he just uses that physical size down on the interior. I thought he could have cut to the basket and made that an easier play, but uh, Wake Forest will take the basket anyway. At one point, listen, at 270 pounds, he's dropped a lot of weight. Shoot, cut, too strong on a floater, and a player still down, and that's Cam Hildreth for weight. Well, he got in the way. He chest. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Steve Forbes always talks about the of Cam Hildreth. Hey! He's holding his hand. He'll check out for Damari Monsanto. He's trying to stay in front there. Let's see really what happened. It looked like he was holding his hand. Tried to catch himself as he was going down. And he looks very uncomfortable. His shoulder, too, the way his arm is just drooping there. I hope he's okay. Monsanto. No dice and a push off on Bradford on the rebounding action. 
jockeying there with Filipowski. And that's three on the big Davion Bradford. Now that's a break for the Blue Devils because Monsanto is wide open. He doesn't miss many of those. And one for five for Damari Monsanto from three-point land tonight. And I guarantee you he's not going to stop shooting. That's a fact. Margin 13. Filipowski shut up. Shoot a good cut. And now Mitchell slicing on Kong. And Mitchell will go to the line. Really good attack by the Duke Blue Devils that time. Good ball movement. Almost driving it in, drawing the defense, kicking it back. Taking advantage of the defensive rotations. Mitchell three for three at the line. He's good on the first. College basketball doubleheader for you tomorrow night right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. First up, 6.30 Eastern, it's Virginia Tech and Boston College, and then Florida State and Notre Dame. Virginia Tech's off to a very nice start this year. Virginia Tech has played very well. Virginia Tech and Miami, probably the two biggest surprises in the ACC so far. <laughs> Appleby draws a Grandison foul. But you try to get in front of this guy, and he just keeps going. <laughs> now, they've taped up Hildreth's wrist on the bench. The trainer taped it up, and Hildreth, without talking to anybody, walked past the coaches and went to the scorer's table. The coach said, no, no, go back and sit down. So they taped up his wrist, and he, he was going to put himself back in the game. And through that paint, he is quite literally salivating to get back in. And an interesting point here. We've got 12 minutes and 10 seconds left in the game, and the Blue Devils, that was their seventh team foul. So the Deeks are going to be able to get to the line here. Now the Deeks have 16 fouls, so the next foul by Steve Forbes guys, the Blue Devils will be getting to the line. So we might have not a free throw shot here in the last 12 minutes. I promise we'll get to the four tables eventually later on tonight. Appleby's got a dozen to go along with those six assists. Roach on the baseline. Grandison cuts, moves for Mitchell to knock it down. Mark Mitchell's second three. He's got 14 points. You know, he doesn't shoot a lot of them, but he, he picks his spots with those three points. But it's a good looking stroke. Problems for Wade. Rutgers with turnovers for the Deeks. Monsanto, way too much space. Can't give him that much room. And now traveling calls. And this place is... <laughs> ...movement that knocks it down, and I'm telling He gives it away the first time, but when he gets it back, no doubt what he's going to do. Day. You've got a nickname for him as well. Well, Damar Monsanto, whether he's hot or not, he's going to keep shooting it. And, you know, it, it's very funny. <laughs> Talked about Monsanto. There's the Sunliners, VFA 81. There are the Oceana based uh, fighter squadron for the Navy, but their motto is anytime, any place. And I believe that's Monsanto's <laughs> motto as well. Dan, that is among your finest work in a 40 plus year <laughs> career in this industry. <laughs> I hope I don't get any trouble with the Navy. Oh, yes, we don't want that. There's another turnover. Wow. Seven this half. Now, you saw Monsanto, his three-point shooting numbers and two-point shooting numbers are much better than Sunliners, but they, they don't really shoot very many two-points and three-pointers. So they're shooting different things. Not their focus. No. <laughs> a, different, a different mission. Oh, and he had all sorts of space on that three before break. 14-point game, still a long way to go. Long way to go, and remember, Wake Forest has had turnover problems. Duke trying to pick up the defensive pressure. And normally when you're behind in the game, you start your comeback on the defensive end. Well, Blake is tangled, yeah. He's doing everything he can to keep the ball away from Africa. Rich and Young on the bench right now. This is a shot. Sunliner wanted that one, and then Bradford and Filipowski get wrapped up. And Kyle Filipowski gets tagged 
for the foul. His second. Well, that was a pretty good response by Bradford because he got it with one arm because Philip Bowski had it by the other one. So the Philip, one one. Philip Bowski is fortunate that he didn't drop that one down. He would have pulled down on one and he could have got himself a hook and hold flagrant. Philip Bowski has really struggled tonight. Just has never been able to find a rhythm. And Roach, Roach has turned the ball over four times. Roach and Filipowski been the two best players this season. They've combined for nine of the 12 Duke turnovers. Roach getting ready to come back in for John Shire. Mitchell's been good tonight. Bounces for Young. Filipowski passed up the three this time. And then Appleby tried to pick it. Filipowski saved it. Proctor rises and hits. Boy, that is a big, big shot for the Duke Blue Devils. Tyrese Proctor coming in only a 24% three-point shooter. And for the Blue Devils to avoid that turnover and then make a three, that's a big basket. Let's see if that can get him going. Proctor's second bucket of the night. Monsanto bounces for Bradford. Oh, yeah. He walks with it indeed. Appleby comes so close to getting that one, but what a great play by Filipowski to get rid of the ball when he's laying on the ground, and then the penetration by Blakes creates a wide-open three-point opportunity. Bradford to the bench. Matt Marsh replaces him in the front court for the Deeks. Duke trying to trim this to single digits midway through the second half. They've only led for 19 seconds in this game, the first couple of minutes, if you're just joining us. Well, there's and Hildreth Hildreth back yeah. in. <laughs> Blakes, he connects. He's got 10. And how big has Jalen Blakes been for Duke? Steve Forbes wants a timeout. And Jalen Blakes is cooking on the road. Jab step, knock it down. He's got three steals. He's got a block shot. He only has one turnover. And this is the closest the Blue Devils have been in the second half. A month ago, we were sitting at Cameron, and John Shire said to us, Jim Blakes has turned around games for us, even that early in the season. Well, he's trying to do it here in a game in which Duke is trailed by as many as 15 here in the second half. And they wrap up Monsanto, but it's a foul against the Blue Devils. Three on Filipowski. Monsanto, now this is something you don't see very often. Monsanto going to the free throw line. This is only his fourth trip to the three fro free throw line this year. Twice he was fouled shooting threes. Once he had three shots, the other time he made it. And then he had an and one. And the other time, <laughs> it was in the Rutgers game, he was the victim of a flagrant foul and he had two shots. So this is very unfamiliar territory for Damari Monsanto. I can tell he fascinates you. Well, just some interesting statistical anomalies. The guy never goes to the free throw line. Shows up there here in the second half, and he made both. Ten-point lead, nine to go. I think those were two pretty big points. Wait, needed to do something to stop that momentum. Both moved it for Blakes. Attacking, kicking, extra pass, Filipowski. Too strong, and he is still dry from deep over four. Now, you're not going to get better looks than that. Great ball movement by the Blue Devils. They did everything but make the basket. Now the guy have to get a defensive stop. The boys look for Wade. Just hangs on to it near the sideline. Roach draped all over him. What defense from Jeremy Roach. Roach does a really nice job cutting him off and Appleby tried to sell that one as the ball bounced off Roach, but it did not. Appleby can be loose with the basketball sometimes, but you know you take the good with the bad with him. Got seven turnovers. Young sets the screen for Tyrese Proctor. 
bounce back for Blakes. Oh, he knocks down another. And that was with a hand in his face. You just, you just feel a little bit of energy from the Duke Blue Devils now. Game's a little easier when the ball starts going to the basket. Top Martian answer. What's that, the fourth time we've seen that tonight? How good is this shaping up to be down the stretch? Mitchell, no foul. Monsanto pushes. Appleby hoists. Can't hit. Young tries to save it, and it squirts out to Carr. Hildreth and Carr slow it down for the Deeks. On Roach. Flicked it up, no. Young clears it. Put that ball all the way around the rim. Blakes has a career high 13, a career high three threes. He's feeling it. Backs it out on Appleby and now directing traffic. Blakes skips it. Here's Proctor. Spins it out. Missed a couple of wide open looks from three, but again, Proctor's not noted for his three point shooting prowess. 24% this freshman season. Blakes doesn't like that foul call, and that is four on Jalen Blakes with six and a half to go. Blakes at one end, and Marsh and the Deeks at the other. John Shire's young team on the road, down by nine, eight straight road wins. All of that last season. You see the longest active streak in the country, and then Wake been really good here at home at the Joel under Steve Forbes. This is an extremely important game for Wake Forest. I mean, they got throttled up at Rutgers, and then they have this game, then they've got Virginia Tech, and they've got North Carolina. That is a heck of a stretch. Flip side for Duke. We told you they last played 10 days ago. They play here, then they don't play again until New Year's. So they played 12 games in 33 days. No power conference team in the country played more in that time, and now they play one time in 20 days. Well, it's just a weird quirk of the schedule. Uh, the first break is exams, the second break is the holiday break. So plenty of time left in the game. And how important is Jalen Blakes? He is still out there with his four fouls with six and a half left. You can see if Wake can take advantage of that with Proctor. Oh, Young missed the bunny. With, App with Appleby. You see now Proctor is going to guard Appleby. And let's see if Wake tries to post Hildreth up against Blakes. Hildreth fighting through pain. He's got that right wrist wrapped after the fall at the other hoop earlier this half. Hildreth, short, slapped out of there by Blakes to Proctor. Mitchell, can't hit, offensive rebound, and Blakes drew a foul on Appleby. And that's two on Tyree Appleby. Now, Hildreth did exactly what we thought he was gonna do, take the ball down inside. I think Hildreth was surprised that Blakes fell down because he sort of he sort of short armed that one. But Blakes on the offensive end, even with those four fouls, he continues to be extremely aggressive. First trip to the line, 64 percent this year. And he makes the first. We'll have another special ACC PM for you tomorrow afternoon with the crew in Charlotte for the second night of the inaugural Jumpman Invitational. Latest from around the conference. And then the Tar Heels against Michigan. They'll preview that one. The coverage starts for Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. He makes both. Well, you said he's 64% free throw shooter coming in, but he has done everything today. He never scored in double figures in his two years in Durham. He's got 15 tonight to lead all scorers. Car straight on. Draws air. Well, Steve Forbes is claiming that Young got a piece of that, but the officials don't agree. It's 
So it's, it's, it's down to nine again. Marsh back into the game for the Demon Deacons. Young, a good adjustment by Carr, got a hand on that. That was a layup if Carr doesn't get his hand on the ball. Nice pass by Young. Great passing big man. Proctor from the corner. And can't connect after be the rebound. It stays at nine, coming up on five to go. Roach switched on to Hildreth. So it's Proctor again on Appleby. Hildreth goes to work. Hildreth down the lane for two. He's got 14. But he's had some kind of a performance. Two points of timeout. Early in the game, we showed you Hildreth's folks from England over here visiting, and he's putting on a show for him. He gets past Roach and then pulls up with the little floater. Doesn't try to take the ball all the way to the basket where he might get it blocked. Marsh does a nice job in there setting the screen for him, just getting in the way. Dad loves it. His mom on the right. How cool is that? Family coming over from England to watch him here around the holidays. Sophomore has put on a big time performance and now playing through pain. Well, he, and he showed you a little earlier before he fell on that wrist and that was a problem, but he takes it up, puts the trainer, takes it up, he tried to put himself back in the game. There you go, right by Steve Forbes. 14 points, eight rebounds. The lead is 11, Monsanto poked it away, Blakes recovers, bounces for Filipowski. No. Marsh secures it. That's a really good rebound by Marsh. He just out fought Young for the ball. And again, Filipowski had a wide open shot. See that offensive drought for Duke. Appleby turns it over, stumbling against Roach. That is Tyree Appleby's eighth turnover. Well, he was, he was looking for the foul right there. You know, he's trying to throw his body into Roaches, and I think he just knocked himself off balance. Appleby comes to help, and he was the last to touch it. He stays with Duke. Oh, he turns. Is Not at 100% on his bad ankle. Filipowski got tied up, somehow got that out for Blakes, who slashes and finishes. Well, they're sure glad they brought him tonight. Trying to single-handedly keep Duke within striking distance down the stretch. But Wake has had answers. Cut from Hildreth. Filipowski forces a car turnover. Steve Forbes can't believe it. Inside of four to go. Back to Winston-Salem after this. Well, this is where he's done most of his damage. He's been able to get the ball in the lane, make the short-range jump shot, sometimes against much taller players. And he just he just hasn't really forced anything ever since early in the game. Early in the game, he was trying to post up and made a couple of mistakes. He has three turnovers, and most of them came early. And here's the two guys who have led the way tonight. Filipowski missed another three, but Roach on the offensive glass will go to the line. He gets fouled with 3.30 left and Duke down nine. And I remember we've talked about how Duke, how effective they are on the offensive boards. We haven't seen that tonight, but here down the stretch would be a good time for them to get going. Roach's first trip to the strike. Only three points for... Jeremy Roach. John Shire told us this morning that yesterday was the first time that Roach practiced fully. It's a toe injury that goes back to Thanksgiving weekend out in Portland against Purdue. Now, anybody who's ever had a problem with a toe knows that that's really a hard thing to even move around, much less play basketball. 
He's got four points, seven point cushion for Wade with the basketball. Monsanto. No. And a rebound, Mitchell. Well, you take that shot. Monsanto will make that shot most of the time. Duke can make it a two possession game. Offensive foul, and Hildred took the charge. Boy, if you, if you want a tough play, then Hildreth is your guy. This is just a great job moving his feet. Now remember, he's got that wrap on his wrist and it looked like he put his hands down again and he's holding his wrist right now. He fell on that wrist earlier and he just fell on it again. Delay of game warning then followed on Jeremy Roach. Who then commits a foul on Appleby along the sideline right in front of the Duke bench. That's a risky play by Appleby. He was really looking for the foul right there. And that's now four on Roach. Yep. So Roach has four, Blakes has four. With 310 left. And that's that's sort of a problem because you're gonna need your guards to be aggressive trying to defend the wake ball handlers. This is not the guy you want to foul on. No, no. 88% this year, and Appleby is 10 of 11 at the strike tonight. Well, what did Steve Forbes tell you? That he wanted Appleby to get to the line more? Well, this works. Absolutely. Paying attention to the coach. He makes both. Brandison pop free. Back iron. Hildreth climbs for the board. Great block out by Marsh. You need to be tough with the basketball, but you don't want to lose your aggressiveness. We're trying to thread that needle here. Hildreth on the oh. step throw finish. Now that's the first time he's gone all the way to the goal. I think he confused the Blue Devils. Young responds. Oh, he's really good, isn't he? He's got a big night as well. Eight points, eight rebounds. Three assists for Ryan Young. And Hildreth had been stopping short mid-post every time. Yeah, had that little pull-up. Again, you don't want to get overly conservative here. Will be for Monsanto attacking the closeout in the mid range. Inside of two minutes, Roach at the rim, and John Shire takes a quick timeout with 154 to go. Nine point game. That's really a good play by Monsanto. He's a guy who's not noted for stepping inside the three-point line and shooting the jump shot. And, you know, Steve Forbes was bad at him. Didn't play him in that App State game because he said he didn't like his practice habits. And Monsanto has responded very well. He sets the screen. Then he's got a chance to shoot the three, but steps inside Blake and hits the two-point shot. He's not going to take the ball all the way to the basket. That's not what he does, but that's a really good play by Monsanto, and he's made a couple of big shots tonight. Yeah, he's only two of eight from three, but the gravity that he forces because of his shot-making ability, and, and you said it, a guy they didn't play in that one-point game against App State. Steve Forbes told us today, I don't do very well with energy drainers <laughs> at practice. Monsanto has received the message. And now, Monsanto's been with Steve Forbes a long time. Yep. Came with him from East Tennessee, and so, you know, they know one another pretty well. But that was a really good play by Monsanto. And how helpful when Damian Williamson is still sorting through that back injury for the last month. Hildreth went tumbling out of control. Carr bails him out. Appleby's got it. Still 20 seconds to soak here on the shot clock. Appleby is bumped by Filipowski. That's four on Kyle Filipowski as well. Filipowski does a really nice job at his size being able to stay in front of perimeter players, but, you know, the guards haven't been able to stay in front of Appleby tonight. That's a big ask for Filipowski. Quickness and speed. Two of the first things that Steve Forbes talks about with Tyree Appleby. 
and it just causes so many problems. I mean, who really, for long stretches tonight, has been able to stay in front of him? Well, nobody. Not for long stretches, and you talk about his ability to attack the basket and Monsanto's ability to stretch the defense. When Wake is playing well, those two guys are in the middle of it. And of course, Hildreth just gives you that toughness that you have to have if you're gonna be a good team. 90 seconds to go. The lead 11 for the Demon Deacons against the number 14 team in the country. Grandison, though. No. Young cleans it up. Back down to single digits. Now, ideally, you'd like to try to keep the ball out of Apathy's hands if you can. And a dribbling from Damari Monsanto into a double team. They've got a trap. And a timeout taken by Steve Ford. I think Ford. the timeout was, was called before the foul. There was a foul called, but I think the timeout came before the foul. So one left for both teams next. Well, Mike, we've talked about what a big game this is for Wake Forest because they they got throttled by Rutgers, and that's a Rutgers is a really good team, and that's a really tough place to play. But after tonight, look at the schedule. They got to play Virginia Tech, North Carolina. <laughs> And then, of course, you've got to go to Louisville, Florida State, and at Boston College. But this was a huge game for the Demon Deacons. We'll see Louisville on Thursday night. They're over at NC State. And Louisville, by the way, at home tonight, they lost to Lipscomb. 75-67 at the Young. Well, they're, they're coming off a two-game winning streak there. But Louisville has struggled all year. By the way, if you're looking for Virginia, Miami, we will get you to that as soon as this one is done. We'll take you down to Coral Gables with Jay Alter and the coach Seth Greenberg. Hildreth gets it into Appleby. There's double team trying to get it out of his hands. Car gets bumped. Blakes collided with him. And if they do get Blakes, he's done. Jalen Blakes fouls out with a minute to go after doing yeoman's work for a shorthanded Duke team tonight. When the Marsh comes in the game and Williamson goes out, and this is, he's in there for defense. You don't want Marsh in there when you have to shoot free throws. And Dukar makes the first. He doesn't go to the line a lot, but he's a 71% free throw shooter. He's got a good looking stroke. Five weight players and double figures. Proctor checked in for Blakes. Filipowski drives to the rim and doesn't get the roll. Altered by Marsh and Carr. I think Marsh actually got a piece of that one. This place can fill. Monsanto. Of course. The exclamation point! <laughs> he wasn't trying to do that. Roach with a response. 24 seconds left. 11 point game, and what a performance! for Wake Forest. And particularly coming off a, a tough loss to Rutgers, just, this was a gut check for the Deeks and they responded, what well, an effort. <laughs> 81 70 the final in Winston-Salem and for Steve Forbes in year three at Wake, his first win over an AP top 25 team. How about that? Really, really a good team effort by Wake Forest. I thought keyed by their defense. And even though they turned the ball over a lot, they made enough shots 